It's actually the clean-up team. It's there to clean up. As the environment changes, so do the microorganisms. They now become the exterminators. The exterminators is helping to actually contributing to the next stage after the garbage collectors. So what's, what's the exterminator's name? That's the yeast, fungus, and another name for the exterminator is virus. What I'm drawing for you here is the cycle of life. It's the cycle that brings matter back to dust. That's the cycle of life. Let's continue with the cycle of life and let me show you the next stage. The next stage is the undertaker stage, which basically, yes, is the stage that takes away dead things. So what's the name of the undertakers? That's mould. It's the last stage. That's why, as I mentioned, when you see the mould, it's actually at the reproductive stage, last stage. This is the cycle of life, the cycle that brings matter back to dust. And what does the preacher say at the funeral? Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. He's referring to the cycle of life. He's referring to what's going to happen in that coffin. The matter will be brought back to dust. The cycle of life, it's called, or the carbon cycle. And a basic law of science states nothing's created and nothing's destroyed. It just changes form. The cycle of life is essential to understand the role of microorganisms of disease. And it's also imperative to understand that the whole world does not have to lock down because of a virus. Why is it there? Have you noticed CDC figures? 98% of people that get that flu recover. The ones that don't recover have pre-existing health decisions, health conditions. So if a person goes down bad, why? Why? Florence Nightingale, very famous nurse, she was asked to go to Scutari. Scutari is the port where the wounded were being taken in the Crimean War. Here's the Black Sea, here's Crimea. The French and the British were fighting the Russians. Not much has changed. They were fighting the Russians. The wounded were put in boats. They were sailed down to the hospital in Scutari. And a war correspondent went to report on the war effort and he was shocked what he saw in that hospital. 50% of the men that got into that hospital were dying. And these are strong young men. They had a better chance on the battlefront than they had in that hospital. So he wrote an article when he went back to London. We, did we raise our young men for this? Well, the British people rose up. That's their sons. That's their nephews, that's their grandsons. In fact, they claim that the French were being better looked after than the British. So the British government sent Florence Nightingale and 35 nurses over to Scutari. When she arrived, she was shocked. There was raw sewage in the corridors. She met a man who was still in his battle clothes two weeks after he'd been admitted. The doctors were not washing their hands between operations. But the doctor said to Florence, you're not coming in here, this is men's business. She knew her limitations as a woman in 1854. So she contacted the British government. She said, you need to send a sanitary commission over here to have a look at the situation. And they came, it was a crisis, and they found that the hospital, which had several stories, was built in a swamp. And there was a dead horse in the swamp and a dead dog in the swamp, and the men were drinking the water out of that swamp.